Hey guys, so we are in back at the coach and training push today. Haven't filmed this session for you guys. Uh, it's a really good session and I really want to talk about like the fly that the that coach has is literally probably the best fly in the world, hands down. Uh, we'll get into that and explain why, but you'll, you'll see it and you'll agree with me instantly. Um, but yeah, feeling really good. 16 weeks out tomorrow. Body weight is at like 83 kgs flat right now but dropping really nicely, like a kilo off every single week right now. We haven't had to adjust food over the last like four weeks. So just what we want, just cruising. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be a really good session. Uh, hopefully we'll take some uh, progressions, perhaps not. Maybe the goal will just be retention. At the end of the day, we are doing presses and that does rely on body weight a lot. So we will see because body weight has been coming down um, quite consistently now. Uh, so yeah, we'll get in there and we're gonna have a really good session. Oh, it's that time of the year now, my hay fever starts kicking in, so my eyes are just like itching and everything, so it's a bit of a struggle, but uh, we'll try and ignore it. So um, I'm gonna go for the 50s, but before I do this set, I'm actually not gonna look at my logbook. So don't get me wrong, like the logbook is a really important tool and very useful tool to make sure you're enforcing progressive overload. But right now on prep, I do not wanna be chasing numbers to sacrifice form. And I think right now, where, you know, I'm at 16 weeks out, coming down in body weight, you know, getting pretty lean now. I wanna make sure that I'm handling every load perfectly in terms of accuracy, in terms of my execution. So I'm not going to look at the logbook today. I know roughly like where I should be, but I just want to get perfect reps on these 50s. Whether that, whether that means I fall at like six reps, seven reps, five reps, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm always going to go to failure. I'm always going to want as many reps as I can get, but accuracy needs to be the main thing here. And through doing things like this, it's going to allow you to retain your tissue so much better on prep. You know, your training is going to be a lot more boring now when you diet. You've just got to understand that and you just gotta do what's necessary to preserve your tissue. Go in the first light as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Three, two, one. Yes. Yes. Mm. Good. Perfect. Good. Yes, come on. Let's go. You run, come on. Yes! Yes! Things to really think about when you do high incline is um, how important that like initial spot is that you're getting on your first rep. When we want to like use progressive overload as our main tool for hypertrophy, we need to make sure that everything is perfectly standardized and consistent so then we know that the progressions we take can only one, mean one thing, which is going to be added tissue. So if one week you're going in without a spot, struggling loads on your first rep, second week you're going in, the person just sort of, a common mistake I see is like, they'll stand and they'll just watch the person with the dumbbells here, and then they'll come in to spot them. Uh, it's really important, like myself and Charlie always make sure the minute you're kicking the dumbbells back, instantly you're almost, trying to catch their arms straight away and give them as much as possible. I said that to Charlie before my set, like as much of a spot as possible on the first, and then we'll just consistently do that every week. And then we'll know how to understand our progressions and our numbers because it's just completely standardized. Um, so that's one really important thing to think about when you're utilizing a spot or movements like this. Yes, come on. Okay. Yes! Come on. Let's go. Yes! You! You! Oh, yes. Oh. 
So yeah, we're just um, on that going second set utilizing pauses. I like to sometimes do a slightly different thing on my second set just to switch it up a little bit. You know, really working in that length and range, pausing it there. No, you didn't need to film this, it's shit at this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the spot? Yes, come on. All day. Yes. Okay. Boom. Come on. come on. Yes, yes, yes. You, you. What's that? Whoa. Whoa. That was match reps for two weeks ago, so I'll take that. Yeah, so obviously I just spoke to you about standardising your spot on a high incline. Another thing you want to standardise on your incline smith is making sure your alignment is consistent every week. That can be something quite tricky, especially if you're working with someone else. Like me and Char Charlie are always altering the bench because he's a lot taller than me. But yeah, make sure that your alignment is the same every week because, you know, if one week you're going in and the bar's like higher up on your chest, the other week it's down here, you know, you're potentially going to be doing something that you're not used to and then also sometimes you may be going into that set in like a weaker position so that's a really useful thing to think about like make your alignment consistent you know whether that means finding some sort of marker or something that you can look at that lines up with it or something just to know where you feel comfy uh, that will help especially if you use your training with someone that has a complete different frame to you and you need to keep moving the bench between every set three two one yeah. Go. Loads more, come on. Yes, come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Yes, you. Come on. Oh, fuck it about like your mindset when you're training and prepping stuff, you gotta remember, as your body rate's coming down, if your numbers are going down a little bit or all they're staying the same, think about what body weight you're at and then think about what, what strength you were at when you were last touching that body weight. Because most of the time you're gonna find that you're actually at the strongest you've ever been at that body weight. You know, I'm now sitting like at 83 kilos and pre I'm pressing like just under my peak strength when I was like 88 kilos. So, yeah, just remember that. Like, remember, if you're down in body weight and your strength's holding, you're actually technically making progress still. Especially on things which require a lot of body weight, like pressing, like we're doing today. Yeah, so, this is literally probably one of the best flies you'll find in the world, hands down. It's just so good, because they're so locked in. And then, the pads here are actually placed here as opposed to like on a pec deck when you're holding it with your hand. That's so useful because I don't know if you ever noticed like people doing cuff flies. It's so much better to initiate from the elbow as opposed to the wrist when you're doing a fly. So setting up with this forces you to initiate from here and cue biceps together, which is per making you straighten out your arm because you're coming from here, which is gonna allow your pec to get way shorter you know, you'll probably see people on a pec fly, biggest mistake they make is they'll go like this and their elbows will just be angling in. There'll be a lot of elbow flexion at that last bit. And you're just limiting your pec from moving at all there. Like your pec literally is not moving from here onwards to there. All it is is your front delt coming forward, which is then going to compromise your rotator cuff and you're not going to get the pec fully short. Whereas on this, you can't even do that because of the way it's set up. 
you only have elbow flexion at the back, allowing you to lengthen out your pec even more. And then when it comes forward, it, it moves to force you to straighten out your arm at the top. So it's literally been set up perfectly to mimic a fly. Whereas a pec deck is just sort of this straight motion. So yeah, if you know any gym with this, which you probably don't, um, but if you do, then get yourself to a gym that has this because it's so good. Come to La Coach basically, and you can try us out. You know, I've only ever seen it in a goals gym other than here. Obviously it's gonna be in other places, but yeah, it's a very rare piece of kit and so good to, to grow your chest. Yes, come on. Let's go. We like to use the prime grips just because it's less fixed than if you were to use like an easy bar. So it allows you to really like, just get that extra bit, getting your tricep even shorter. So just really think about on this, like lengthening your tricep as much as possible, but keeping your elbow in the same position fixed next to your body. You know, we want to limit the elbow positioning to be in the same position because the minute your elbow moves like this, then your lat is going to come into play. So keep your elbows fixed in, lengthen up all the way, and then get your tricep as short as possible. And we're gonna pause on both ends. We're gonna start, I'm gonna do a high rep set first, and then we're gonna do two heavier sets after that. Kills. Ah. 
Charlie, you're going to get it in the comments. I know, but it is what it is. Yep. Oh, oh fucking hell. Come on. Yes. <sighs> Come on. Right. Yeah, got it. Yeah, you'll probably find that on prep. Like when your food gets lower, as you get to the end of the session, you start feeling a bit more and also like, you'll, that strength will drop off quite a bit. Like a lot more than if you were off season. You know, now at the end of my session on easy skull crushes, you know, that strength's really gone. You know, because I'm on lower food, I'm not gonna be able to perform as long as I would if I was, you know, in the off season. So just recognize that and understand like, your isolation's at the end, you'll probably notice quite a quick drop off. Yes, come on. <sighs> Fuck. Come on, come on. Another. Okay, come on. Yes! Fuck. Oh, go on. <sighs> so, that was a really good push session at 16 weeks out, basically just sort of retained all my numbers and actually progressed on like my overhead pressing but understanding that I improved my execution a lot, so re realistically it's actually probably progress. But yeah, really good session today, still feeling pretty good on prep. Obviously I'm noticing now like that's like dizziness, that energy dropping and we haven't dropped food for the last four weeks, what it really is just is the fact that I'm getting leaner, I'm reaching that level now of condition where you do feel it more, your hunger levels are up more, you are a little bit dizzier. Uh, but I still feel good, energy is good. It's just like that slight, you know, that slight prep feeling is creeping in a bit now, which realistically it's exciting me because you know what that means. We mean it means we're coming in. And yeah, prep's now kind of getting to that exciting point. We just did a few rounds of posing at the end there. Um, I'm gonna keep it quiet for a bit. I don't wanna overdo the physique updates. We'll do another one maybe in like a week or two, a couple of weeks and see where I'm at then. But yeah, we're at that stage now in detail where every drop in body weight is revealing new things now, which is exciting. The boring stuff is done now on prep and it's, yeah, it's now getting to the exciting stage. So yeah, please like and subscribe and yeah, keep following on as we progress through prep. Many more videos to come and I'll see you soon.